welcome. Today I'm going to teach the basics on how to tune your harp, whether it's a lever or a pedal or a lap harp. It's all the same um, in terms of how to tune. So uh, I do have an article on my website that is um, very detailed in terms of how to tune. So I just thought that I would accompany that with this video. So let's get started. So first things first, you might notice that I have something stuck on my harp strings and it is a piece of paper towel folded over on itself and the reason that I have done that is uh, to muffle the lower end of the strings or the overtones while I'm plucking on the harp string. So I'll give you an example, see if you can hear the difference. <clears throat> so for instance when we pluck the C and I immediately stop it, we shouldn't be hearing any other tones on the harp, uh, anything else kind of carrying over. If I pull that piece out and then do it again, you should be able to hear that carrying on a little bit. That's what we want to stop. So we want to stop that sound so that while we're tuning the rest of our harp, the tuner can pick up that, that pitch specifically and uh, it, it helps us in the tuning process, kind of quickens, quickens the process. So um, you can either use a paper towel folded over like this um, or uh, I've, I've invested in something a little bit more permanent. Um, I went to my local craft store and got a couple pieces of felt. Uh, the first piece of felt is kind of just your regular felt, you know, and the, the beauty of this is you can choose your favorite color, mine is purple, so uh, that's your regular felt. Uh, or you can choose something a little bit thicker, you can choose a premium felt, so it's going to be a little bit more sturdy. Um, and then what I do with that is I just string it through, and what I like to do is start on the C below middle C and push it behind that C and then bring it out in front and just kind of weave it through the rest of the strings. Then that way I've kind of gone from C to C all the way to the end of the harp. So if you have a lever harp or a smaller harp um, you won't need a piece this long or if you do cut a piece this long it's just going to come up a little bit higher. There's nothing wrong with that. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have the proper equipment. So you want to make sure you have a tuning key and a tuner. Um, these can both be found on Vanderbilt's website. You can also go to Amazon to find yourself a tuner or you can go to the app store and find yourself an app for your smart device. It is really easy. There are some free ones out there, some other ones that cost a few bucks. Um, so that's what I would do first. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to tune with two different apps that I have. One of them I really prefer, it's called iStroboSoft and it is for Apple products. But I'm also going to show you another tuner uh, that was free on the App Store so you can see both. So make sure that you, when you tune, you put your tuning key on the tuning pin on the other side of the harp. Um, I'm, I'm five feet tall, I am not a very tall person, so I cannot readily see that I am on the right tuning pin corresponding with the right string. So one thing that I have learned to do is place my thumb on the tuning pin of the string that I want to tune, and then I take my third finger, my middle finger, and I kind of wrap it around and just kind of memorize muscle memory where that tuning pin is. I've done this so often that, that nine times out of ten I can hit the right tuning pin. Um, but since you're first starting out, if you want to just kind of look up and above and make sure that you're on the right tuning key, tuning pin rather, um, or if it's hard for you to see, what you can do is place your tuning key on the tuning pin and give it a turn, rotate it right and left, and kind of visually see and make sure that you are 
seeing the right string turn that you want to tune. So what you also want to do is never take your right hand off of that tuning key while it is on the harp. If you put that tuning key on the harp and you take it away, there is a chance that that tuning key could fall and hit the soundboard and damage the soundboard. These used to be wood. They obviously have improved upon that by making them uh, rubber, but uh, accidents still happen. So do not take your hand off of that tuning key. The string that you want to tune, I suggest you pluck with your left hand, second finger, while keeping your right hand on the tuning key. And what I do is I place my thumb on a string above, and I use that as a crutch. So I keep my thumb positioned on that string while I continue to pluck. So what I want you to do next is I want you to turn that tuning key on the tuning pin to kind of get used to the sensitivity of it and how far it needs to move for the pitch to go up and down. So while you're plucking that string, I want you to tune, constantly pluck and const constantly turn that tuning key um, forwards and backwards and kind of hear that pitch go up and down. So let's just do it real quick. So that should give you an idea about how much you're going to be turning to uh, reach the pitch that you need. So to prepare for the tuning process, what I want you to do is place your stand where it should be placed, to so the left of your harp. And what I've done is I've put one of the feet of the stand practically underneath the harp, so it's as close as possible, so I don't have to turn my head as much. I also make sure that it's out of the way of the pedals. If you're a lever harp player, this may not be a concern. Just make sure that it is close to the strings as possible without touching the strings, without touching the soundboard. Go ahead and place your tuner on the stand and place it as close to the strings as possible so you don't have to turn your head that much. And for this particular app, it shows the pitch. It shows a needle going right and left and it's got some lights flashing for us. It's got the green, which would mean that it's pretty much in tune. If it goes to the red light on the right, which is sharp, it is too sharp, we need to lower the pitch. If it's on the red dot to the left, it is flat and it is too low, so we need to raise the pitch. So we are aiming to have the needle point on zero as much as possible, up and down and to have the uh, pitch above say A, not A sharp, not A flat. Okay, so remember, find the string that you want to tune, put your tuning key on, place your second finger on the string you want to tune with your thumb resting above that. Pluck several times so that the tuner can pick up that pitch Now you should see that I'm too sharp, so I'm going to go ahead and pluck that again. The needle will be for, uh, to the right. Which means I need to change my, uh, adjust my tuning key. As close to zero as possible, as close to the correct pitch. I'm going to show you what it's like to tune with uh, another app that I prefer to tune with. It is called iStroboSoft and it's for Apple products. Um, and it has uh, these bars that go up and down to show me whether or not I'm sharp or flat. It gives me the pitch and it gives me the sense. So I want the sense to be as close to zero as possible. I want those bars to be as still as possible. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to pick a different pitch, which will probably be out of tune. So I'm too flat. Tuning 
can be incredibly daunting for a beginner harpist and uh, time consuming. So I just encourage you to take your time with it, be patient with yourself. It is something that is just as important as learning how to play the instrument. If we have an instrument that's not in tune, we're not going to sound good. It's going to discourage us from practicing. So enjoy. Thanks. Thank you.